Alrighty, hey there, this is Small Time Crooks, a 15 minute rules light RPG card game. I'm Jason Walsh, the developer of the game, and today I am going to take you on a walkthrough through the heist and escape phase of Small Time Crooks. Now, I can do that a little bit more easily because in this target in particular, the escape route is 100% different from the entry. As you can see, we're going to start here, and we have our uh, thief token sitting up there. We're going to go through two rooms, get to our score, which is sitting in the innovation lab. We're going to retrieve the score, and then we're going to head out through two random rooms up top. Now, this is a 100% random game. I did not stage this at all. I know I've done a casing the joint phase, which you may have seen in another video, but we're going to simulate right past that. I've got no idea. In fact, because I'm using testing cards, some of these same cards may repeat over again. I mean, this is really going to be totally out there. So let's get going. Here we go. I always start, and you'll always notice that bookends for cards uh, are what we call anchors. This is what an anchor looks like. It also has this cool blueprint style photo as opposed to a typical room card. In a typical room card, you can see it has just a, a regular illustration. Room cards are also separate from uh, anchors because anchors have obstacles built in. This really helps us bookend the narrative properly. You can also see that this bookend here has barrier, so it's gonna make this game extra hard. I need to simulate how I'm going to get into this heist. And in this game in general, what I need to do is also plan my path. Now that typically will happen in the end of the case the joint or case the job phase. But because we're simulating that we skipped that today, I'm just gonna have to use my, my wits right now. Now, one more time, we can see that this uh, anchor allows us to either use dash or talk to get by it and I need to roll a four or better in order to do that. Thankfully, dash and talk are two abilities that the wheelman have. The wheelman's good at dashing, and the old timer, he is good at talking. So I'm gonna take a risk here. Uh, I definitely know I can only see this on the board. Uh, and I know in planning my route that I need the old timer to go here. He has the best ability to fight the um, the robo dog with succeeding on a four or better. So that means uh, if we trade off once a turn, the wheelman would go here and the old timer would go here. So anytime I start a turn in this game, while yes, I will mechanically be rolling and adding any modifiers, this is also about that storytelling. So I'm really going to enrich and embellish the narrative for my friends as I play. And in this part in particular, we're going to go in at night, and there is a night crew here, um, but I'm going to act like I'm, I'm supposed to be here. So I do have a cane, but I'm dressed up in a really nice suit. Uh, I come in with that austere manner about me. My back is arched. My chest is puffed up. I act like that British aristocracy we're all familiar with. So I'm going to roll... Let's see. Nice. It rolled off the table. However, not going to move it. You can see I got a five here, which means we pass this. When you pass, what you do before moving on is select the next active player. So the old timer is no longer is his turn anymore. It's the wheel man's turn. Now that control has been given over, the wheel man will move the thief token ahead, flip any face down cards, Okay, and flip the discovery card. Okay, no event here. Well, that's good because this sucks for the wheelman. So the reception is the card. It gives disadvantage on all dash rolls in this room. And dash would probably have been the easiest result because it would only penalize us once if I failed it. Disadvantage, for those of you who don't know, in our game means I have to roll twice and take the short, the uh, lower of the two rolls. So what I'm going to do in this circumstance, I also have a plus one bonus to tech. That's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to roll this dice. Come on. Come on. Nice. Five. Okay. And we got by it, which is great because that's also a barrier. So now, whew, 
Uh, what's our story here? Our story is as we go through the reception, um, I do notice that these they have these security shutters active and that there are these motion sensors sort of around them. Uh, and so before they can respond, um, I have a uh, like a more, a better watch. And I kind of, I have like a little keyboard on and I kind of tap into my watch and tap into that vi device via Wi-Fi and shut it off. So those shutters do not go down. Now I'm gonna move on. We're back to the old timers control. Roll ankle. Active player rolls an ankle disadvantage on all dash checks. Ouch, that's disadvantage on dash twice. Conference room, all right. I would get advantage on all talk checks in here. However, the robo dog does not speak English. So being charming to him is not really gonna matter. However, this is the setup and thing that I wanted because I am gonna use force and all reliable. So when I get into the room, it is this big executive conference room uh, and I see the robo dog and it starts to come at me. Um, and what I do is I jump on its back in that moment. The, the wheelman is surprised how nimble the old timer still is. He might be old, but he's been a veteran at this. And at that moment, he has this old, reliable, trusty screwdriver, and he removes an access panel on the back and just unplugs the sucker. So let's roll four. All righty. Man, that's good. I got a plus two on that, so it's a plus six. Nice and easy. My rolls are super good today. I promise this dice isn't rigged. So that means we get to move on, and it is now the wheelman's turn again. Thankfully, our discovery card says no event, and I can get into the innovation lab. Once I clear this obstacle, I will get our special score, which in this case is a decryption key. But I've got to defeat all the obstacles first. So I see the innovation lab, and at this point, I see a group of scientists who are clearly coming in after a late dinner. They look haggard, they look tired. Um, you can tell they're going in for some emergency or some BS reason. And after seeing them, I just adopt a very similar visage and I just sneak right up in behind them. I like tailgate the end of the group. And as they go through and run their key cards, I just pretend to run one behind them, but I don't have one. Okay, so. If I take my native bonus here, plus one, plus this two, I only get a plus three. And to get through here, I need a five. So I'm, I'm gonna narrate that failure now. As I try to walk through, uh, I have nothing. And the guy in front of me is like, hey, wait a minute. Uh, what are you doing? You don't, you don't have a key card. When we play this game, we love to talk about this game as a film. Right? So in this moment, in this scene, the wheel man owns the scene. He is the star. And even though the other players are also making it into that place, it's the wheel man who's the star of the scene. It's the only person whose stakes the camera is currently on. However, if you fail on a barrier, someone else can step in. So in this case, I don't necessarily have to roll again as the wheelman. If I have somebody else on the team, they can join this scene along with the wheelman and take the reins. And so I'm gonna try that now. The wheelman stands there befuddled. You can tell he doesn't speak anyway. He gets disadvantage on talk checks. So at this moment, the old timer is gonna step in and say, oh, no, 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 hold on. It's, it's, you know what? He left his card back at the bar. Last thing I want to note, because this is our first failure, we need to up the alert level. So we're going to go ahead and up this now. Bam. Now we're to one. If we get two more failures, it's game over for us. Okay, so let's roll for the old timer's excuse and see if it works. I need to get a four or better. Ugh, it does not work either. So now the alert level goes up. There's a little bit more heat. And at that moment, um, while the old timer is talking, I'm going to have the wheelman try to just slip in. At this point, the old timer is distracting the group. The wheelman is going to see if he can't melt behind the crowd and just take this decryption key while the wheelman, while the old timer is distracting everybody. Yeah, there it is. So I got a four plus one is five. 
So we successfully take the score. I'm going to remove it, put it over here, and now we can move on. The old timer says, as the wheel man kind of walks back out into this crowd, like, you know what? We'll go back to the bar. I really appreciate you fellas being so good about security. Thanks, and we'll catch you later. Now, because I have done a failure swap, it's anybody's turn from here. We don't have to observe the rule of uh, uh, it just can't be the same person to go again. So in this case, I know that talk is good for this next one. I can see this next uh, obstacle and it is a uh, talk. So we're gonna go ahead and keep the, um, the old timer in control and play here. Quick note, now that we have the score, we are officially in the escape phase. If our target card told us an exit was here, then we could technically go either way back out. We could go this way and go through old rooms, or we could continue up to a second exit that's up here. Now, this specific target is designed to be a little bit more difficult, so we are going to have to go through those rooms, but there are many of these and they all look different and all have different entries and exits. If I cross back into an older room, let's say just like this, let's say I was gonna to try to exit this way. Because this discovery card is already flipped, I would not observe it again, but because there is an obstacle in here, I would have to replay that obstacle again. The only time that doesn't happen is if I roll a six. A six is a critical hit and it will knock out an obstacle completely. So if I were to return to this room, I would say something like a lab tech was working on plugging back in the robo dog, curious to how it got disabled. And in that moment, the robo dog came back to life. But we are not going that way because our only exit is to the north. We're going to have to jump out of a uh, off the top of the roof, I'm going to guess, with this office park card. So the old timer is the active player and moving on. No events. Nice. Let's see what we got here. 3D printing lab. Cool. A failure in this room, a force failure in particular, would add an additional star to the threat level. So really good that that's not an option. So as the team moves into that room, um, you know, 3D printing is cutting edge tech. Um, the old timer just plays the fool in here. And he just starts talking to the guys in the room and it's like, oh my God, this is so cool. Like, where did you guys, what, what do you guys think the coolest thing to build is? Yada, yada. And as he's having that conversation, his hand sort of like reaches out in the back and grabs a key card. Nice. Now, I rolled a six here, but you'll also notice that this card has an ability called discard. That means it's one of those rare cards that even if you fail it, it gets removed from the board and you don't play, do it again. Once you get a key card, you got it. You can't steal it twice. So now, since I succeeded, we flip players. It's the wheel man's turn and we move on. Lost, you get lost. Instead of progressing ahead, move one back the, the uh, direction you came. Place an additional obstacle in that room. Oh crap, okay. Not good for us. Oops, we were at a one here. So we are going to have to Go back oof, to the innovation lab. We still do get to flip this, so we see what it is. Okay, and we're gonna be in the innovation lab and a random obstacle is drawn and placed out here. So in this case, we're gonna use a, a guard that needs to be distracted. We somehow get turned around after the 3D printer lab and show up in the innovation lab again. And in that moment, the crowd that we saw earlier is talking to a guard. Now, in this case, it has to be the wheelman's turn because we succeeded last time. They are now the active player. So before I even get to the guard, I'm going to try to make a plan to just tech him out of the way. When you have more than one obstacle on a, a card or in an area, you get to choose the order. So if you wanted to, you could get lab access again. But... I'm gonna to try to distract the guard first. I feel like I can get lucky here. Nice, I needed a four. So uh, I got, with that plus one, I have a five. That card still stays there because somehow we could wind back up here again. 
Uh, and now I have to get lab access. So I'm really hoping here, I'm just gonna power walk slip through. Son of a gun, I didn't do it. Uh, I'm gonna go up to alert threat level two here. And in that moment, I'm just gonna try again and power right through. Son of a gun, technically at this point, the game is over and I have lost. Uh, that's it. You'll notice though that we very purposefully keep this entire threat track here. I'm sure you're wondering, why do we do that? We do that because we know that number one, sometimes you're just trying to tell a great story and that the numbers are not always gonna work out. It's fine. Sometimes dice rolls are literally just against you. I know we've all had that day rolling ones. Uh, but also, if you're playing with folks who are new to the game or for some other reason you want to introduce a little forgiveness, maybe even you're just playing with a much harder GM'd board and there are specific top, tough obstacles anywhere, you can reset this to any level you want. This game is about telling a great story first and then the mechanics and the strategy second. And everything here we tried to do to support that type of conversation. So at this point, I am going to call it. I'm going to say I lost the game. Didn't even get through the innovation lab, although I do have the score. Uh, but I will quickly tell you how the game ends. So let's say I did make it up through here. Um, love this card. The HVAC closet means that I don't have to flip that discovery card on the last one. So technically, if I could make it back up here and get to here, I could get out. However, uh, you can see that this has barrier as well. I would say that I would jump off the roof or something crazy like that. I'm just going to roll for fun. Yeah, no, they're really telling me the game is over. Um, and if I had cleared that last obstacle on the exit card, then I would have officially won this game. But... There is a reason why this difficulty is hard. This is not an easy target to do, and it's best to do it with more than one player. That's the game. We did it in 17 minutes with all of my rules and explanations. This game is a 15 minute light RPG. It can be a GM'd experience. Uh, and if you would like to try it out, sign up for our newsletter, get ready for the Kickstarter. What you're seeing right now is what we call the corporate espionage expansion and it will be available as a free download print and play when our Kickstarter comes out in August. All right, take it easy. Thank you so much. Like and subscribe, and we will catch you later.